Welcome back, everybody. I've been feeling lost in the Bermuda Triangle, as you can see, by thinking about the cubic formula. But let's have another look at it today. As you can see, I also got my Einstein haircut now that the lockdown has freed up a little bit. But first, I want to really thank everybody for subscribing to my channel because I now have, believe it or not, over 500,000 subscribers. Unbelievable. I never thought I'd see the day. Please continue to share my channel and to recruit more subscribers for me. So the cubic formula it applies to ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d equals zero. And here I'm going to choose a equals one. I would just divide by a to make it one so we don't lose any generalization. Then it turns out that the solutions x are this complicated cubed root plus the same stinking thing except for this minus sign. And I must confess in the last video I put a squared here by mistake so please ignore that. Plus g. Where g is negative b over 3. f is c over 3. And E is G cubed plus BC minus 3D all over 6. Let's see how that applies to some of our previous examples, just to tie things together. So let's start off with a really easy one. X cubed equals 0. Well, we know that X is 0. So aren't there supposed to be three roots for a cubic? Well, we get around that by calling this a triple root. Or you could say a root of order 3. And you can think of it this way. x cubed is x times x times x. So there you have the, the three possibilities. But you, you get 0 for all three of them. So that's particularly simple. Now let's look at x cubed equals 1 again. One thing I didn't mention last time is that after we write this as x cubed minus 1 equals 0, so we see that d equals negative 1, we can factor this into x minus 1 times x squared plus x plus 1, which is equal to 0. So yes, we can see that x equals 1 from here. But if I use the quadratic formula, I'll get negative 1 plus or minus root 3 over 2. In other words, negative 1 half plus or minus root 3 over 2. I might have put the 2 in the root sign with the 3 last time. It might have looked like it. So only the 3 is in the root sign. But how can we get that by using the formula up here? That's probably what we want to study. So let's go back and do that. In the formula, x cubed minus 1 equals 0. b is 0, so g is 0. c is 0, so f is 0. So f and g are both 0. And again, I'm not swearing when I say f and g. But e is equal to 0 plus 0 minus 3 times negative 1, so 3 over 6, 1 half. And if I plug those values into this formula, I get x equals the cubed root of 1 plus the cubed root of 0 plus 0. So again, it doesn't tell me a whole lot. It just tells me that x is the cubed root of 1. So we have to analyze it in a different way. Let's start with x cubed is the root of 1. Or better yet, let's go back to x cubed equals 1. Now, if we think of this as the complex number, we can write it as a magnitude, which of course is 1, times e to the i theta, which is Euler's formula. I'll write that over here. And 
and there's going to be a particular theta that works, but you can also add any number of two pi radians to that because you can go around as many times as you want in either direction and you'll still get the same angle. Now, let me just explain what e to the i theta means. e to the i theta can be written as cos theta plus i sine theta. That's de Moivre's theorem. I'll write that over here as well. Or formula, I should say. So, because of the 2 pi n, if I take the cube root to get x, I have to take the cube root of this, which is the cube root of the real number 1, which will just be 1, times e to the i theta plus 2 pi n raised to the 1 third. So that'll just give me e to the i theta over 3 plus 2 pi n over 3, where we only have to consider three possibilities for n, 0, 1, and 2, after which point the answer will start repeating. Now, what's the basic angle for the number one? Well, if we look at the graphical representation where this is the real part and this is the imaginary part, the number one is just one unit to the right, so the basic angle is zero degrees. But I'm gonna to have to use two pi by three more, and if I put one in there, and also four pi by three more if I put two in there. If we switch that to degrees, I'm gonna to have to include 120 degrees, and 240 degrees. So let's see what we get when we use those angles. I'm going to get x equals the cos of 0, whether it's degrees or radians, plus i sine 0. I'm going to get cos of 120 degrees, or 2 pi by 3 if you prefer, times i times the sine of 120 degrees. And I'm also going to get, let's say 4, or the cos of 240 degrees plus i sine 240 degrees. Well, the first one's the easiest. Cos of 0 is 1. Sine of 0 is 0. So that just gives me 1, which was the real root, the one that we expected, first of all. And then cos of 120 is the same as negative cos of 60. So that's negative 1 half. And sine of 120 is the sine of 60, so plus i root 3 over 2, just as we found earlier by using the quadratic formula. Now the cos of 240 is the same as the cos of 60 and except it's negative again, so it's negative one half. And the sine 240 is negative sine of 60, which is minus i to 
times root 3 over 2. Again, that was the one we got using the quadratic formula. So we see that this cubic formula does work. I'll be back to talk to you more about complicated formulas in future videos. So in the meantime, try not to be lost in the Bermuda Triangle. See you later.